Hi, it's Trisha. When you think of Peru, you think... Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Rainbow Mountain. Rainbow Mountain. But let me tell you that there is so much more to Peru than Machu Picchu and the Rainbow Mountain. Introducing Huaraz. In the northern part of Peru, there is a site that most people don't visit and is actually my favorite hiking spot in Peru. Snow-capped mountains and beautiful lakes are Huaraz's strong suit. Most hikes are over 4,000 meters above sea level, but non-professional hikers like you and me can definitely have an equally extreme adventure in Huaraz. Head south of Lima and get to know Paracas, a small port town catering to tourism where I also lived for a year. Paracas serves as the gateway to Islas Ballestas, a group of small islands where you will find sea lions and many different types of birds. It is often called the poor man's Galapagos as you can visit this site for as low as $10. Paracas is also home to the Paracas National Reserve, a protected area of desert and marine ecosystems. From rich waters to arid lands, Paracas surely has it all. Just an hour away from Paracas is Huacachina, the largest and the only desert oasis in the whole of South America. Huacachina is very famous for its high dunes where tourists get to enjoy an extreme buggy ride in the desert and sand dune boarding. And this is just the beginning. If you go a little bit more south, you will see this. Colca Canyon, the second deepest canyon in the world next to the Grand Canyon. The main activity here is the three-day hiking where you will get to see vicuñas, a South American member of the camel family that is closely related to the alpaca, guanaco, and llama. Get a chance to see llamas and alpacas in their natural habitat. In here, they completely roam free. And finally, the highlight of the Colca Canyon is the condor bird, the largest flying land birds in the Western Hemisphere. If you're a fan of the outdoors, you shouldn't miss this. Next up is Uros Islands, home of the Uros, an indigenous group of people from Peru and Bolivia. They live on an approximate and still growing 120 self-fashioned floating islands in Lake Titicaca near Puno. The floating islands are an extraordinary feat of engineering. Workers collect totora reed and weave their dense roots together to form a sturdy layer. You can visit for a day by riding a ferry from Puno or you can even spend the night with the local Uros family. Explore the great Peruvian south starting with Pisac, a Peruvian village in the sacred valley of the Incas. Pisac is perhaps best known for its markets which are flocked by tourists from nearby Cusco. Its Incan ruins, known as Inca Pisac, which lie atop a hill at the entrance to the valley, is also a great gift from the Incan Empire. The Incans constructed agricultural terraces on the steep hillside, which are still in use today. They created the terraces by hauling rich topsoil by hand from the lower lands. Another great Incan gift awaits as we head to Ollantaytambo ruins an Incan archaeological site in southern Peru. The ruins at Ollantaytambo are mostly of religious significance, although they were also important strategically. Ollantaytambo was made by Emperor Pachacuti. During the Spanish conquest in Peru, the leader of the Inca resistance used it as a fortress. It has the distinction of being the only place in Peru where, in 1536, the Inca repelled the Spanish army. One of the most impressive sites I've seen in Peru is the Morai ruins. An unusual Inca ruin, mostly consisting of several terraced circular depressions. This landmark was likely used for farming and soil samples have shown that soils were brought in from different regions to be used in helping grow crops at the different levels of the terraces. Last but not least, Maras Salt Mines. 
The salt evaporation ponds are four kilometers north of the town, down a canyon that descends to the Ria Vilcanota and the sacred valley of the Incas. There are over 5,000 salt ponds, some owned by families and others unused. Since pre-Inca times, salt has been obtained in Maras by evaporating salty water from a local subterranean stream. The highly salty water emerges at the spring, a natural outlet of the underground stream. Of course, this doesn't mean that you have to skip Machu Picchu and the Rainbow Mountain. This video just shows the many options of places to visit in Peru. I hope you can get to visit all these places. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. I just want to tell everyone that this video is supported by Peru Hop. Peru Hop is a bus transportation that will take you door to door to your hostel and to your next hostel. And they are the ones who made our travels in Peru very comfortable. So. I'd like to thank the people in Peru Hub for having us. So thank you so much.